In this video, we are going to create a sine wave infusion and animate this using an audio input. Let's start by creating a new timeline. Once we have our timeline, let's add a fusion composition to it from the FX panel. Perfect, time to switch to the fusion page. I'm going to start by adding a background node by pressing Shift Enter to open up the tool search and then link this to the media out node. This background node is going to act as a line. To do that, I'll add a rectangle node to the background. If we have the background node selected and add the rectangle node, it will be automatically added as a mask to the background. Let's modify the width and the height of our rectangle so that we have a nice line at the center of our view. Let me quickly change the color of the line to green by changing the color of the background node. Excellent. To get a sine wave, we can now add the waviness node after the background node. To get the sine wave, we need to set the waveness type to horizontal. When we now change the strength and the scale, we get our sine wave. By default, the animate checkbox is turned on. So when I scrub the timeline, we can see that the face of the wave is automatically animated. Pretty cool. So if you need a quick sine wave in your composition, this is a quick way of doing it. But let's see how we can further enhance it. The waviness node only allows a maximum strength of 100. So if we want a stronger strength, we can add a transform node after the waviness node. In the transform node, we can uncheck the use size and aspect checkbox. This will allow us to control the X and I size independently. I can now increase the eye size to further increase the strength of the wave. There might be a little catch. If the original line we used was too thick, the curved part of the wave will look a bit off. To get a better looking curve, best is to keep the original line as thin as possible, which we can do from the rectangle node by lowering the height property. Now we have a very thin wave and if we want to make it thicker, we can add an erode dilate node after the transform node. When we increase the amount property in the erode dilate, we get a much better looking wave line. What else can we do? Let's link the wave to an audio file. If you have reactor installed, there is a cool modifier reactor called suckless audio. This will allow us to create a modifier based on an audio file. If you don't have Reactor installed, check out the many videos on YouTube on how to install it. Ok, so how do we use this? Let's select the waviness node and right click on the strength. From the pop-up menu, we can choose modify with, modifier, and there we have the suckless audio modifier. This will add a modifier tab to the inspector. First thing we need to do is to load a WAV file. Once our audio is loaded, we need to change the amplitude scale to something like 200. This modifier is driving the strength property of the wave, which goes from 0 to 100. By changing the amplitude scale, we are making sure that the strength property gets values within a range that would make more sense. If we scrub the timeline, we can indeed see that the strength of the wave varies over time. When we take a look at the strength property, we can also see that the value changes as we scrub the timeline. Pretty cool. I can now go back to the modifier, right click on its name and choose rename. For easy reference, I'm going to call this audio. Back in the tools tab, I can go to the controls and add an expression to the scale. In the expression, we can now refer to the modifier with the audio variable. I'll divide the output of the modifier by 2. Using an expression allows us to reuse the modifier as we can modify the value of the output without the need for a second modifier. As we scrub through the timeline, we can see the scale and the strength varies. Let's make it a bit cooler by adding a trails node. The Trails node will add ghost copies to the composition. I'll lower the gain in the Trails node so that they are less visible. The pre-roll frames is just for previewing. I'll just set this around 20. When I scrub the timeline, we got this cool ghosting effect. The whole effect looks a bit chaotic. 
to smoothen things out, we can go to the audio modifier under the waviness node and change the mode to unsigned median and also apply a filter from 300 to 3 kHz. This gives a much smoother animation, but the strength of the wave has gone down a bit. But with the help of the transform node, we can crank it up a bit. Let's go back to the edit page and take a look how this works. Nice! We can now add the audio we used in the modifier to the timeline. Pretty cool! You can further enhance the effect by changing the colors of the trails and adding glows to the curves. Your imagination is the limit. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave. Until the next video.